The Dark Secret of Kolomabiri. Prince Opukmi of Kolomabiri, the eldest son of King Komebia, was known throughout Bielsa for his charm and bravery. Tall and handsome, with an aura of regal confidence, he was admired by many. However, behind his captivating exterior lay a darkness that few suspected. Kolomabiri was a prosperous kingdom, its lands fertile and its people content under King Komebia's wise rule. The king was a benevolent ruler, always seeking the welfare of his subjects. He believed that his son, Opukim, would one day continue his legacy. Little did he know that his son harbored a sinister secret. He rapes the women in the land. Every night he sends away his bodyguards and goes on his secret mission alone at night. Prince Opukmi had developed a dark desire, one that he could not control. Under the cover of night, he would slip out of the royal palace and into the villages. Masked and cloaked, he preyed upon unsuspecting women, leaving them traumatized and silent. The prince's assaults were carried out with such precision and secrecy that no one ever suspected the charming prince. The women of Kolomabiri lived in fear. They shared their stories in harsh whispers, warning each other of the danger that lurked in the night. Despite their shared suffering, they felt powerless. The prince's status and power were insurmountable barriers to seeking justice. One of the victims, a young woman named Tariari, had tried to speak out. She was a strong-willed fisherwoman who refused to be silenced. However, her cries for justice were met with disbelief and ridicule. The idea that the beloved prince could commit such heinous acts was unthinkable to many. Toriari's courage was crushed, and she retreated into silence like the others. As months turned into years, the prince's dark activities continued. The women of Kolomabiri became adept at hiding their pain, putting on brave faces while their hearts ached. They lived in constant fear of the night, each one dreading that they might be the next victim. In the palace, Prince Opukmi charm and wit masked his true nature. He was a skilled swordsman and a strategic thinker, often accompanying his father on diplomatic missions to neighboring kingdoms. King Komebia was proud of his son's accomplishments, unaware of the darkness that festered within him. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Opukmi prepared for another night of predation. He donned his dark cloak and mask, slipping out of the palace unnoticed. His heart pounded with anticipation, his mind clouded by his uncontrollable urges. Little did he know that his actions were being watched. In the celestial realm, Amasimo, the goddess of Kolomabiri, observed the suffering of her people. She was a compassionate deity, deeply connected to the land and its inhabitants. The cries of the women reached her, and she could no longer remain a passive observer. The time had come to intervene and put an end to Opukma reign of terror. As Opukme moved through the shadows of Kolomabiri, Amasimo began to devise a plan. She would take human form and confront the prince, but not with violence or punishment. Instead, she would use her divine power to teach him a lesson that he would never forget. The goddess knew that only through a profound transformation could the prince be redeemed and the women of Kolomabiri be freed from their torment. The rumors begin. The whispers started as mere murmurs among the women of Kolomabiri. In the marketplaces, at the riverbanks, and within the confines of their homes, the women shared their harrowing experiences in harsh tones. The realization that they were not alone in their suffering brought a semblance of solace, but it also spread a wave of fear and anger. Tariari, the fisherwoman who had once tried to speak out, became a central figure in these secret gatherings. Her courage, though initially crushed, began to inspire other women. They formed small, discreet groups to share their stories and offer each other support. Despite the fear of retribution, these gatherings provided a safe space for the women to voice their pain and seek comfort. One evening, as the women gathered by the river, Tariari spoke up. We must find a way to protect ourselves, she said, her voice steady but filled with resolve. We cannot let him continue to harm us. We need to be brave, 
for ourselves and for our daughters. Her words resonated with the group. They knew that speaking out openly could lead to severe consequences, but they also understood the importance of solidarity. They began to devise ways to protect each other, such as setting up warning signals and looking out for each other's safety. As the rumors spread, even the men of Kolomabiri began to take notice. Husbands, brothers, and fathers heard the whispers and saw the fear in the eyes of their loved ones. The initial reaction was one of disbelief and denial. The idea that Prince Opukmi, the future king, could be responsible for such atrocities was unfathomable. However, as more women came forward with their stories, the truth became harder to ignore. Among those who struggled to accept the rumors was Debo, a young farmer who had known Opukmezin's childhood. He couldn't reconcile the image of his friend with that of a predator. But when his sister, Boma, confided in him about her assault, Debo's world was turned upside down. The pain and fear in her eyes were undeniable, and Debo realized that he could no longer remain silent. Determined to seek justice, Debo approached his friends and fellow villagers. They discussed the situation in secret, grappling with the challenge of confronting the prince without risking their lives and livelihoods. The men decided to gather evidence and testimonies discreetly, hoping to present a united front to the king when the time was right. Meanwhile, in the palace, Prince Opukmi remained oblivious to the growing unrest. He continued to move through the kingdom with his usual charm and confidence, unaware that the women he had wronged were beginning to organize against him. His arrogance and sense of invincibility blinded him to the consequences of his actions. Amidst the brewing tension, the goddess Amasimo watched over her people. She saw the courage of the women and the awakening of the men. Her plan to confront Opukme in human form was taking shape, but she knew that the strength and unity of the people would be crucial in bringing about true change. As the rumors continued to spread, the kingdom of Kolomabiri found itself on the brink of a significant transformation. The dark secret of Prince Opukmi was inching closer to the light, and with it, the hope for justice and healing. The goddess's intervention would forever alter the destiny of the kingdom. The Goddess Amasimo High in the celestial realm, Amasimo, the goddess of Kolomabiri, observed the turmoil unfolding in her beloved kingdom. Known for her boundless compassion and wisdom, she had always been a silent guardian of her people. But the suffering of the women and the darkness within Prince Opukmi heart demanded her direct intervention. Amasimo was a deity deeply connected to the natural world. The rivers, forests, and mountains of Kolomabiri were her domains, and she often appeared in the whispers of the wind and the rustling of leaves. Her presence was felt in the gentle flow of rivers and the nurturing rains that sustained the land. The people revered her, and she had always responded to their prayers with blessings and guidance. For centuries, Amasimo had watched over Kolomabiri, ensuring its prosperity and peace. She had seen generations of rulers come and go, each leaving their mark on the kingdom. King Komebia's reign was one of the most prosperous, marked by his wisdom and fairness. His people thrived under his rule, and Amasimo's blessings were abundant. However, the goddess's heart ached as she witnessed the growing darkness within Prince Opukim. She had hoped that Opukmi would follow in his father's footsteps and become a just and compassionate ruler. But his actions had proven otherwise, and the suffering he inflicted on the women of Kolomabiri could no longer be ignored. Amasimo decided that it was time to take a human form and walk among her people. She would confront Opukmenet with wrath, but with a lesson that would strip him of his power and force him to face the consequences of his actions. The goddess knew that only through a profound transformation could Opukmi be redeemed and the women of Kolomabiri find justice. One night, as the moon cast a silver glow over the land, Amasimo descended from the celestial realm. She took the form of a beautiful woman with striking features and an aura of serenity. Her eyes held the wisdom of ages, and her presence exuded a coming strength. In this guise, she would blend in with the people of Kolomabiri and set her plan into motion. 
Amasimo chose to reside in a small village on the outskirts of the kingdom. She introduced herself as Oma, a healer and a traveler seeking to help those in need. Her arrival brought a sense of hope to the villagers, who were captivated by her gentle demeanor and the healing powers she possessed. As Oma, Amasimo began to build trust among the villagers. She healed the sick, comforted the grieving, and listened to the stories of the women who had suffered at Opukme hands. Her presence brought a sense of calm and hope, and the villagers began to confide in her, sharing their fears and sorrows. Through these interactions, Amasimo learned more about the extent of Opukme actions and the pain he had caused. The stories of the women fueled her resolve to put an end to his reign of terror. She continued to offer solace and healing, but she also prepared for the moment when she would confront Opukme directly. Meanwhile, the unrest in Kolomabiri grew. The whispers of the prince's crimes reached even the farthest corners of the kingdom. The men who had been gathering evidence and testimonies were ready to present their case to King Komebia, hoping that justice would prevail. Amasimo, in her human form, knew that the time for confrontation was drawing near. She would soon face Prince Opukmin teach him a lesson that would change him forever. The goddess's intervention was set to unfold, the divine encounter. Prince Opukmi prowled through the dimly lit street of Kolomaberi, his dark cloak billowing behind him. His heart pounded with a mix of anticipation and a sense of power that his nocturnal activities brought him. He was completely unaware that this night would mark the beginning of his downfall. Amasimo, in her mortal guise as Oma, had been preparing for this moment. She knew Opukmi patterns, having listened to the women's accounts and observed his movements. She waited in the shadows, her serene presence contrasting starkly with the prince's sinister intent. As Opukmi moved through the narrow alleys, his eyes fell upon Oma. She stood alone, seemingly vulnerable, with an air of otherworldly calm about her. Her beauty was captivating, and Opukim, driven by his dark desires, approached her with his usual predatory confidence. Ama did not flinch as Opukmi drew near. Instead, she met his gaze with eyes that seemed to see into the depths of his soul. Opukmi, unsettled by her unyielding stare, paused for a moment. But his arrogance and desire quickly overpowered his momentary hesitation. Who are you, wandering alone at this hour? Opukmi's voice was smooth, masking his true intentions. I am Oma, a traveler and healer, she replied, her voice gentle but firm. I am here to help those in need. Opukmi smacked, interpreting her words as an invitation. Help me then, he said, stepping closer. I am in need of your company. Omar's expression remained calm, unperturbed by his advances. Are you truly in need, Prince Opukmi? she asked, her voice carrying an ethereal quality that sent a shiver down Opukme's spine. The use of his name startled Opukmi. He had taken great care to ensure his identity remained concealed during his nightly escapades. How do you know who I am? he demanded, his tone laced with suspicion. Oma took a step forward, closing the distance between them. I know many things, Prince Opukim, she said softly. I know of the pain you have caused and the darkness within you. Opukmi mask of confidence began to crack. The intensity of Oma's gaze and the weight of her words unsettled him. You speak in riddles, he said, his voice faltering. I speak the truth, Oma replied. You have harmed countless women, leaving them in fear and anguish. Your actions have consequences, and it is time for you to face them. Before Opukmi could react, Omar's form began to shimmer. The mortal guys melted away, revealing the radiant figure of Amesimo, the goddess of Kolomabiri. Her divine presence filled the air with a sense of awe and reverence. Opukmi fell to his knees, overwhelmed by the revelation. Goddess Amasimo, he stammered, his voice trembling. Forgive me, I did not know. Amasimo's eyes bore into him, filled with both compassion and sternness. Your actions have caused great suffering, Prince Opukmi, she said. But I do not seek to destroy you. 
Instead, I offer you a chance for redemption. With a wave of her hand, Amasimo cast a spell upon Opyukmi. He felt a searing pain, and in an instant, his manhood vanished. The power and control he had wielded over his victims were stripped away, leaving him powerless and broken. This is your punishment, Amasimo declared. You will no longer be able to harm others in this way. Your journey to redemption begins now. As Opyukmi lay on the ground, riding in agony, Amasimo's form began to fade. Seek forgiveness, seek healing, and seek justice, her voice echoed as she disappeared into the night. Opyukmi, now deprived of his manhood and filled with a newfound sense of fear and remorse, knew that his life had changed forever. The divine encounter had set him on a path of redemption, one that would require him to confront the consequences of his actions and seek atonement for the pain he had caused. But the divine intervention left Prince Opyukmi in a state of shock and despair. The once confident and arrogant prince now found himself stripped of his power and haunted by the goddess's words. The realization of his actions and their consequences weighed heavily on him, and he knew he had to find a way to atone for his sins. Back in the palace, King Komebia grew increasingly concerned about his son's absence and the growing unrest among the women of Kolomabiri. Whispers of Opyukmi misdeeds had reached his ears, but the king found it hard to believe. He decided to consult the kingdom's oracles for guidance, hoping to uncover the truth. The oracles, wise and attuned to the divine, revealed the grim reality to King Komebia. They spoke of Opyukmi Hena's acts and the goddess Amasimo's intervention. The king was devastated. His heart ached for the women who had suffered and for his son, who had strayed so far from the path of righteousness. Determined to set things right, King Komebia called for a council of his most trusted advisors. They gathered in the Grand Hall, their faces etched with concern and determination. The king shared the oracle's revelations and the goddess's decree, seeking their counsel on how to proceed. One of the advisors, a wise elder named Toru, spoke up. Your Majesty, the goddess has given us a path to redemption. Prince Opyukmi must marry all the women he has wronged. Only through this act of humility and restitution can he hope to regain his manhood and restore justice to our land. The council agreed with Toru's suggestion. They knew that it would be a difficult and unprecedented task, but they also recognized the importance of following the goddess's decree. King Komebia, though heartbroken, resolved to carry out the plan. The next morning, the king issued a royal proclamation. The town crier, a man known for his booming voice and unwavering loyalty, was tasked with delivering the message throughout the kingdom. He walked through the streets, his voice ringing out over the bustling marketplaces and quiet villages. Ah, Aizun! Ah, Aizun! By order of King Komebia, all women who have suffered at the hands of Prince Opyukmi are called to come forward. The prince shall marry each and every one of you, as decreed by the goddess Amasimo. This union shall bring justice and healing to our land. The news spread like wildfire, reaching every corner of Kolimabiri. The women who had suffered in silence felt a mix of emotions, fear, anger, hope, and a desire for justice. They began to gather, sharing their stories and supporting each other as they prepared to confront the prince. As the day of the marriage ceremony approached, the kingdom was abuzz with activity. The royal palace was adorned with decorations, and preparations were made to accommodate the grand event. The women, though still haunted by their trauma, found strength in their unity and the promise of justice. Prince Opyukmi, now humbled and filled with remorse, prepared himself for the ceremony. He knew that his path to redemption would be long and arduous, but he was determined to follow through. He could no longer run from his actions or hide behind his royal status. The time had come to face the consequences and seek forgiveness. The day of the ceremony arrived, and the women of Kolomabiri gathered in the grand courtyard of the palace. They stood together, their faces a mixture of resolve and hope. Prince Opyukmi, dressed in simple robes, approached them with humility and sincerity. As he stood before the women, 
he felt the weight of his actions and the enormity of his task. He took a deep breath and began to speak. I stand before you today, humbled and remorseful. I cannot undo the pain I have caused, but I am here to seek your forgiveness and to honor the goddess's decree. I vow to marry each of you and to dedicate my life to making amends. The women listened, their hearts heavy with the memories of their suffering. But as they looked into Opukmi's eyes, they saw a glimmer of genuine remorse and a desire for redemption. One by one, they stepped forward, ready to take part in the ceremony that would bring justice and healing to Kolemabiri. The marriage ceremony was a solemn and emotional affair. Each woman took her place beside Opukmi, their union symbolizing the beginning of a new chapter. The kingdom watched in awe as the prince, once a predator, began his journey of atonement and redemption. As the ceremony concluded, a sense of hope and renewal filled the air. The women of Kolomabiri had found their voices, and the kingdom had taken its first steps toward healing and justice. The plan set in motion by the goddess Amasimo was unfolding, and with it, the promise of a brighter future for all.